Story One of Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by phone. Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods by George Ethelbert Walsh. Bumper hunts with the pack. Bumper the White Rabbit, when he escaped from Edith, the red headed girl who owned the garden where he lived, found his way into the woods and after many adventures with the bats the crow the fox and buster the bear he was adopted by the wild rabbits as their leader and king the old blind rabbit welcomed him and told the story of how it was prophesied that some day a pure white rabbit with pink eyes would come to deliver them from their enemies and teach them how to live in the woods without fear of danger no one had been more surprised than bumper at this sudden welcome at first he was foretelling them he was no leader and not fit to be their king but as he was very lonely and without a home the fear they might drive him out of the burrow if he protested and explained he was just an ordinary timid white rabbit that had strayed from the city decided him to keep quiet and accept the situation playing king was not an agreeable role for bumper in the first place he felt unequal to it and in the second he felt a good deal like an impostor how jimsy and wheedles his two brothers in the city would laugh at the idea they didn't think he possessed any kingly qualities they would even dispute his leadership in their own family but one thing gave bumper considerable self-confidence he was the only white rabbit in the woods none of the wild animals except buster the bear who had spent a few years in a city zoo had ever seen a white rabbit they didn't believe such a creature lived and the pink eyes why they alone were enough to distinguish him from his country cousins and set him apart as one to be admired there was no question about the admiration all the rabbits felt for him respect amounting almost to awe for his wonderful fur of white and his eyes of a delicate shade of pink made them feel that he was a real king of their tribe bumper after a while grew accustomed to this admiration and he began to feel pardonable pride in his beautiful fur perhaps after all there was something to the story the old blind rabbit told if looks made one a king then certainly bumper was entitled to the position he recalled the words of his mother when she told him he was the handsomest of her children with the purest white fur and the pinkest of pink eyes was that another indication that he was designed by nature to rule over his wild people but on one point bumper entertained no illusions he was conscious of his ignorance of the woods and the ways of the wild creatures why he hardly knew one from another he had failed to recognize mr crow on their first meeting and it is doubtful if he would have known mr fox immediately if mr bullfrog hadn't pointed him out buster the bear he had recognized for he had seen bears in the city zoo and the bats and mr sewer rat were old city friends of his but the woods were full of other strange animals he heard spotted tail a big gray rabbit and fuzzy was a demure little maiden of a rabbit with soft brown eyes refer repeatedly to billy the mink mr beaver sleepy the opossum brownie the muskrat washer the raccoon and curly the skunk now to bumper all these names meant nothing for he had never met the owners of them were they friends or enemies of the rabbits if by chance he should meet one what would he do run away as from a great danger or greet him pleasantly which were the dangerous animals and which were the harmless ones unable to answer this question and dreading lest he make a mistake that might cause him embarrassment if he went out hunting with the pack he pleaded weariness from his travels and remained in the burrow for three whole days during this time he made it a point to ply the old blind rabbit with questions storing up in his mind for future use any words of wisdom that dropped from the shrunken lips of the former leader his attention flattered the old blind rabbit who told bumper many tales and stories of his people and of the troubles they experienced in the woods my gravest fear for my people is he said that they will never learn to be fearless and self-possessed a very little thing frightens them and makes them panicky bumper stored this bit of information away in a corner of his mind i must not get panicky even if the others do he said to himself and another weakness of theirs is that they always do the same thing over and over again continued the old blind rabbit and our enemies know it and thereby trap them 
i must never do the same thing twice alike bumper reflected that's dangerous in the woods many other bits of wisdom fell from the lips of the old blind rabbit and bumper remembered all of them of course he couldn't stay in the burrow forever sooner or later he had to hunt with the pack they went out every day to get their food and to enjoy the sunshine so on the fourth day of his coming when spotted tail asked him if he was going to accompany them he said yes and prepared to lead the way and on that first day he applied some of the old blind rabbit's wisdom which greatly increased the respect of his cousins for him they were feeding on birch leaves and bark in a clearing a long long distance from the burrow when they were startled by the baying of hounds the dogs and hunters are coming spotted tail exclaimed in fright when they appear we must run to the left why to the left asked bumper curiously because rabbits always run that way making a wide circle to throw the hounds off their track but if you do that you are sure to come back to the starting point aren't you asked bumper spotted tail didn't know he had never given it much thought but now that bumper mentioned it he did recall many mishaps where rabbits pursued by the dogs ran plump into the arms of hunters who seemed to be waiting for them it's a simple trick added bumper they send the dogs after you and then stand still until you make a wide circle and come back to the starting point then they shoot you i don't know replied spotted tail but we've always circled around to the left well said bumper quickly we're going to run straight ahead today and then when we have left the hounds behind we'll go back to the burrow in another way but all of our people have circled to the left began spotted tail come follow me straight ahead interrupted bumper there was surprise and consternation at this order old habits were strong and bumper was too new yet as a leader to impress all some followed him and others without really intending to do it began circling around to the left bumper and his followers reached home in safety they easily shook off the dogs and returned to the burrow without sighting the hunters but not so with spotted tail and the few older ones who had followed him they had run plump into the hunters and while no one was seriously wounded by the shots fired at them several limped and showed blood on their coats the old blind rabbit listened to the accounts of the chase and then said what is the use of having a king and leader if you don't obey his orders and follow him the next time spotted tail you will listen to wisdom End of story one Story number two of Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elaine Conway, England. Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods by George Ethelbert Walsh. Chapter two bumper's ignorance excites suspicion spotted tail was not pleased by the rebuff old blind rabbit gave him in the presence of the others in particular he resented it because fuzzy was who had followed bumper's lead sided against him and seemed to think he was in the wrong spotted tail had aspired to leadership of the family after old blind rabbit's death in fact he had been acted in that capacity for some time before bumper appeared but always taking his orders from their old blind leader the sudden elevation of the white rabbit to the position he coveted had not improved his temper there were several others who sympathised with spotted tail and the division in the sentiment of the burrow made bumper feel uncomfortable he was no exception to the rule that uneasy rest the head that wears a crown although in his case it was a crown in name only that he wore but his first triumph in leading the pack gave him new courage and perhaps a little bumptiousness all i've got to do he reflected is touse my wits that's what saved me from mr crow and mr fox so bumper began to study the ways of his country people more carefully he made friends with fuzzy wuzz and she taught him many things 
for one that it was much easier to lead the young people into new ways than the old ones but on the other hand bumper found that the young rabbits were inclined to be careless and reckless which often got them in trouble indeed fuzzy was herself was apt to make mistakes by doing things an older and more experienced rabbit would not but it was bumper who made the greatest mistake of all the young ones and through his ignorance nearly lost all the glory he had gained in leading his followers away from the hunters it happened on the third trip from the burrow goggle eyes a fat lazy rabbit who was forever stuffing himself and thinking of his stomach reported a wonderful feeding ground in a clearing where a woodsman had put up a cabin and planted fields of turnips cabbages lettuce and other luscious vegetables he's away all day said goggle eyes and we don't have to wait until dark to raid his patch i crossed it to-day and ate some of the most delicious turnips i have ever tasted i'll lead you to it this was good news to the rabbits for it was a long time since any of them had tasted turnips or cabbages they don't grow in the wild woods and even bumper hadn't had a smell of one since he left the red-headed girl's garden they were all eager to visit the field and bright and early under goggle's eyes leadership they sallied forth the way was through the heart of the big woods and then along a beautiful stream of water until they came to the clearing the field of vegetables was some distance from the cabin and after goggle eyes announced that the coast was clear they hopped through the rail fence and began greedily filling their little stomachs what a feast it was nothing had ever tasted better to bumper had he munched the succulent leaves of the cabbages and lettuce and the thick fleshy turnips until it seemed as if he couldn't eat another mouthful then out of sheer happiness he rolled around in the field the younger rabbits taking this as a signal for play began rolling and frolicking around too chasing each other's tails in and out among the vegetables bumper forgot all the dignity of a king and played the hardest of any goggle eyes picked off a big cabbage leaf and tried to hide from the others underneath it spotted tail jerked up a small turnip by the roots and threw it over his head at him fuzzy was kicked up her hind legs and sent a shower of dirt all over goggle's eyes hiding under the leaf not to be outdone by the others bumper looked around for something to throw near him hanging from a low branch of a bush was a big grey ball that wasn't either a vegetable or a stone he bumped against it with his nose and found it so light that he could lift it with his front paws easily look out he shouted gleefully i'm going to throw this ball at you goggle eyes all the players turned and when they saw what it was they looked a little horrified and then taking bumper's threat as a joke they laughed i dare you to do it exclaimed spotted tail this dare was accepted at once stand back all of you then bumper added i want to aim straight no he continued changing his mind i won't throw it at goggle eyes i'll toss it up in the air and what goes up must come down either on heads or on the ground you can't do it bumper exclaimed one of the older rabbits can't do it retorted bumper puffing up his cheeks at what he considered a challenge to his strength the ball was twice the size of his head and at a distance looked big and heavy but bumper had tested its weight and found it light and easy to handle here was a good chance to make them think he was strong and muscular he laughed good-naturedly and added i'll show you if i can't i've thrown bigger balls than this one he turned to grab it in his two front paws but fuzzy was turned suddenly pale and cried oh bumper don't please don't proud of the attention he was attracting and pleased at the thought that fuzzy was didn't want to see him strain himself he smiled and put all his strength he had in the pull that loosened the big ball from the twig after that it was easy to lift it in his two paws it was almost as light as a toy balloon 
all the rabbits set up an exclamation of surprise and horror oh oh run they shouted of course bumper thought this was from fear that the ball might be thrown at them and he smiled but when they all scampered away to a great distance and a queer humming sound came out of the ball he howled in his paws he began to wonder if he had made a mistake through ignorance it did not take him long to find out the humming and buzzing inside the ball increased and then out of one end appeared mr yellow jack and his wife and all their children the ball was a hornet's nest and the irate family were pouring out of their home pell-mell bumper felt a sharp sting on the end of his ear a sting like the pricking of a thousand needles and another on the tip of his nose with that he gave a squeal of pain and threw the ball far from him the next he scampered away after the others pursued by a dozen angry yellow jackets it was not until they were at a safe distance that they stopped then spotted tail turned to bumper and said what an idiot you were or oh, didn't you know it was mr yellow jacket's home bumper was on the point of confessing his ignorance when he thought of the consequence a king should know everything and to admit he didn't know a hornet's nest from a ball would be a terrible blow to his pride so he suppressed the groan that the pain on his ear and nose caused and said indignantly no it was mr yellow jacket's home why what an idea but somebody had to pull it down or fuzzy was and the children might get stung it was better that i should suffer than they wasn't it which speech they all applauded and said that bumper was as brave as he was wise end of story two story three of bumper the white rabbit in the woods this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by elaine conway england bumper the white rabbit in the woods by george ethelbert walsh chapter three bumper saves fuzzy was from snake while accepting smilingly the plaudits of the others for what seemed to be great bravery on his part in tearing down the hornet's nest in the vegetable patch bumper was greatly disturbed by his display of ignorance had it dawned upon him that the big round ball was the home of mr and mrs yellow jacket he would have scampered away with the rest it was a narrow escape from disgrace spotted tail had been suspicious bumper's ready wit in turning aside the awkward question had won him further glory but right down in his heart he wasn't sure that spotted tail had been convinced he eyed bumper curiously bumper was certain that he was watching him with suspicious eyes i must be more careful he reasoned spotted tail has no love for me but if spotted tail was disloyal as he was was the soul of honour and loyalty she looked at bumper through her meek brown eyes in a way that made him happy fuzzy was was a particularly handsome rabbit and there was royal blood in her veins she could trace her ancestry way back to the first leader of her race the white rabbit who had predicted the coming of bumper that was so many years ago that none but the old blind rabbit had any memory of it but the blood of this royal leader still showed itself in many of his descendants for instance fuzzy was had more white than brown or grey on her back and head her breast was pure white and most of her head while there were patches of it on her sides but the mixture of blood had given her some very dark colouring which made her anything but a white rabbit fuzzy was was bright and cheerful always smiling or laughing and her wit sometimes equalled that of bumper it was not unnatural therefore that bumper should select her for special marks of friendship a close intimacy sprang up between them and they often hopped off in the woods together to feed by themselves 
Bumper found that Fuzzy Wuzz knew a lot more about wood lore than he, and pursuing his plan to gain all the information he could from everyone, he made good use of her friendship. Pretending to test her knowledge, he would ask her all sorts of questions, which she answered readily, like a schoolboy being quizzed by his teacher. Why do you ask me such silly questions? she asked one day. You'd think I didn't know anything. No, that isn't it replied bumper assuming a friendly attitude i don't want you to get in trouble in the woods and when old blind rabbit trusts you with me i must be sure you know how to look after yourself if i should leave you for an instant what would you do for instance if mr fox should appear and chase you why i'm rim if i could maybe i'd be so frightened i'd fall down in a faint that's what you shouldn't do cautioned bumper if you get panicky you'd lose your head and run down into his jaws what would you do if he chased you she asked i'll tell you what i did do when mr fox nearly caught me he replied then he related to her the story of how he had induced the fox to look at the sun until he was temporarily blinded fuzzy was laughed at this until the tears ran down her cheeks then she added it was very bright of you i'm sure i'd never think of such a trick i'm not so sure of that replied bumper you're bright enough but if you lost your wits you might forget what you do it was shortly after this conversation that fuzzy was got in trouble and bumper came to her rescue and saved her by his wits they had been feeding on the luscious stalks of wild celery near the marsh when they gradually got separated fuzzy wuzz was nibbling away at the leaves all unconscious of danger when she was startled by a loud hiss in front of her she looked up in surprise and saw facing her not a foot away a tremendous black snake he was the king black snake of the woods with a body almost as big around as her head and a tail that stretched way off in the distance the rabbits called him killer the snake because he had destroyed so many birds and young bunnies he was so big and ferocious that he could swallow a small rabbit whole when fuzzy was saw killer the snake so close to her she became paralysed with fear instead of using her wits as bump had cautioned when in danger she simply crouched down and made a pitiful little noise of terror killer conscious of his magnetic power swayed his head back and forth his small beady eyes on her and began approaching in slow rhythmic motions fuzzy was for the life of her couldn't move but she kept up her pitiful little moaning it was this noise that attracted bumper and he called out what's the matter fuzzy was there was no answer but the moaning continued bumper stopped chewing the delicious leaf he had in his mouth and hopped in her direction his coming must have disturbed killer for he shook his head angrily and half turned to face this unknown thing hopping through the bushes bumper came upon killer from behind he had never seen a snake before but the long black body half coiled like a rope instantly told him that it meant danger a sight of fuzzy was confirmed his suspicions bumper's first intention was to pounce upon the snake to save fuzzy was then he stopped to think no this would never do killer might then turn and make short work of him bumper kept at a respectable distance while he tried to work his wits although this was difficult with fuzzy wuzz's pitiful moaning in his ears then suddenly he saw his opportunity some distance back from killer was a big tree that had been snapped off near the ground by a terrific wind it was still held suspended in air by a few branches and the bark that had not been broken by the storm bumper turned and hopped toward this tree killer watched him suspiciously but as he remained at a safe distance he turned his head slowly back to fuzzy was bumper began gnawing at the bark which held the tree suspended over the spot where killer lay he gnawed with his sharp teeth until they began to bleed fuzzy was thinking that he had deserted her moaned louder than ever and killer sure now that bumper wasn't going to attack him from the rear turned all his attention to his victim it was a moment of terrible suspense to bumper would killer reach fuzzy was before he could cut the bark so the tree would fall 
how tough the bark seemed he gnawed and chewed with all his might ripping big pieces off it but still the tree hung suspended in the air then suddenly after one desperate effort bumper was rewarded by seeing the giant trunk drop down an inch then two inches then there was a crash like a thunderclap and sticks and branches flew in the air bumper jumped to one side as the big trunk fell to the ground catching killer by the tail the tree fell right across the lower part of the snake's body and pinioned him there now run fuzzy was shouted bumper there's no danger fuzzy was gave one quick glance at the squirming twisting snake and then darted off toward home with bumper close behind her end of story three story number four of bumper the white rabbit in the woods this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by maria de fatima da silva bumper the white rabbit in the woods by george ethelbert walsh spotted tail shows enmity you can imagine how grateful fuzzy was was to bumper for saving her from killer the snake not only that but she was mightily impressed by his wisdom who but a king would have thought of gnawing off the butt of the tree so it would fall on killer she was so grateful that she told the story again and again to her people and they seemed as greatly impressed as fuzzy was at bumper's shrewdness but spotted tail was not pleased perhaps he was still suspicious and thought it was more luck than knowledge that had saved bumper's reputation he still believed that bumper had never seen a hornist's nest until that day he innocently mistook mr yellow jacket's home for a big harmless ball this fact coupled with several other little things that he had observed bumper's avoidance of certain plants for instance that he seemed to think might be poisonous until the others ate them convinced him that bumper was not fit to be the leader of his people if old blind rabbit could see with his eyes he reasoned he'd know too but some day i'll catch him and show him up He's no king, for a king should know everything. By letting such things dwell upon his mind, Spotted Tail worked himself up into a pitch of excitement that was not pleasant. He fancied himself wronged by Bumper. If the white rabbit hadn't come into the woods, Spotted Tail would have been chosen the natural leader. Jealousy and spite are enough to sour any disposition and Spotted Tail was in a fair way of showing that he was not really fitted to be a leader. A good leader never grows sullen and discontented because somebody else happens to get more favours than he. Fuzzy Woolsey's attachment to Bumper further increased Spotted Tail's displeasure. In time, he came almost to hating Bumper and tried to think of ways and means to disgrace him before the others bumper was only partly conscious of this feeling toward him he knew that spotted tail was suspicious of his knowledge of wood law and he was on his guard all the time to prevent any mistake that would give him away but he never dreamed that the big rabbit was beginning to dislike him he seldom hunted with him and had few words with him but there had been no open enmity between them then one day in the woods bumper found himself unexpectedly separated from the others with only spotted tail in view fuzzy woods and the rest had crossed the brook on a natural rustic bridge of logs and were feeding on the opposite side when bumper discovered them hello he exclaimed How'd they get across there? Surely they didn't jump that distance. 
Spotted Tail, to whom this was addressed, replied, You should know by this time that a rabbit never jumps a stream that he can get across any other way. Bumper nodded and smiled. Still, I don't see how else they got across, Spotted Tail said indifferently. Oh, I suppose they crossed on Mr. Beaver's house. This remark caused Bumper to reflect. He had heard of Mr. Beaver, but he wasn't sure just what kind of an animal he was, and his house was more of a mystery to him than anything else. On Mr. Beaver's house, he asked before thinking. Oh, you mean? He stopped in confusion and Spotted Tail smiled gleefully. You mean what? he asked, his eyes twinkling wickedly. Don't you know what kind of a house Mr. Beaver builds? Why, what a question, laughed Bumper, trying to evade a direct answer. I think it's a very natural question, added Spotted Tail. I don't believe you ever saw Mr. Beaver or his house. Bumper laughed heartily at this, but it was a laugh to conceal his embarrassment and not an expression of his enjoyment. Ho, ho, you can be very comical if you want to, he said. Now maybe you can describe what sort of a house Mr. Beaver builds. Let me see if you can. But Spotted Tail felt he had Bumper in the corner, and he wasn't to be bluffed. I could describe it, he said, leering. But I don't have to. If you have any eyes in your head, you can see for yourself what it is like. How's that? asked Bumper, growing more uncomfortable. Just what I said, was the quick rejoinder. We've been standing near it for some time, and you can see it with your own eyes, if you know where to look for it. Ho, ho, laughed Bumper less joyously than before. Mr. Beaver's house is in plain sight, is it? Well, then, neither one of us will have to describe it. No, but where is it? pursued Spotted Tail relentlessly. Now Bumper was in a terrible quandary. There was nothing in view that looked like a house, so he cast a glance up at the trees, hoping to find it among the branches and then back through the thick, tangled bushes. There was nothing in sight that suggested the home of any animal. All the time, his eyes were searching around for some evidence of Mr. Beaver's house. Spotted Tail was watching him with an exultant grin on his face. Ah, I thought so, he said finally, with a triumphant grin on his face. You don't know what kind of a house Mr. Beaver builds. You don't even know where he builds it. You've been looking for it up among the trees and back in the woods. Ho, ho! And you call yourself a leader, the king of the rabbits. Why, you don't know anything about the woods. Bumper felt he was cornered, and he was mighty glad the others were not present to witness his discomfit. Now, if you're king, show me where Mr. Beaver's house is and where he builds it, continued Spotted Tail. If you can't, I'll go back and tell the others you're an ignorant imposter. You're no king. You don't know anything about the woods or its people. A king indeed. There was such scorn and contempt in the voice that Bumper winced. He realized for the first time that he had an enemy in Spotted Tail. There was no other excuse for his words and actions. Spotted Tail, Bumper began in an injured voice. Why do you dislike me and try to offend me? Don't give me any such talk, rudely interrupted the other. I see through it all. You're trying to avoid a question. Answer me. Where's Mr. Beaver's house? If you don't know, confess your ignorance. Bumper's wits failed him for the first time. He saw no way out of the corner. Spotted Tail had him, and the disgrace of confession was horribly mortifying. A sudden splash in the water attracted his attention. A big rat-like animal was swimming toward the shore, with only his head and muzzle above the surface. Bumper watched him in fascination. When he reached the shore... He crawled upon it and said quite angrily, 
I wish, Mr. Spotted Tail, your people would stop crawling across the roof of my house. It annoys me very much. I was fast asleep when they thumped over it. Spotted Tail was deeply upset by this interruption, and Bumper's wits, coming to his rescue, made him smile. Speaking at a venture, he addressed the rat-like animal. I'll ask them not to do it again, Mr. Beaver. Of course, it is very annoying to be disturbed when asleep by people climbing over the roof of your house. Thank you, replied Mr. Beaver, dipping into the water and swimming back to his dam. Bumper pointed to the dam across the stream and said to Spotted Tail, There's Mr. Beaver's house. End of story four. Story 5 of Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Maria de Fatima da Silva. Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods by George Ethelbert Walsh. A Test of Fleetness. Confident that he had Bumper cornered and that nothing but the timely appearance of Mr. Beaver had saved him from this graceful confession, Spotted Tail returned to the burrow in an angry mood. He had not stopped even to look when Bumper triumphantly pointed out the Beaver a dam. He had hoped to be able to tell the others how Bumper was ignorant of such a common thing as a Beaver's dam, and now he had nothing but an empty triumph. Mr. Beaver had spoilt everything for him. That and Bumper's ready wit. But he was all the more determined to show him up. He began to brag about his knowledge of woodcraft, telling many stories of his shrewdness and skill. Bumper remained quiet and listened with the others. Spotted Tail then switched to another subject. But it takes more than knowledge and skill to be a good lead, they said. One must be as swift as the wind, as well as wise as the owl. He stopped suddenly and turned to the white rabbit. A king ought to be the swiftest runner of his people, Bumper. Don't you think so? Yes, I suppose he should be, if... Then are you the fleetest runner in the woods, interrupted Spotted Tail. Why, I've never tried it. I'm sure I don't know, Bumper stammered. Spotted Tail, sure of his fleetness of foot, decided to challenge him to a race. Nothing would humiliate Bumper more than to be defeated in a speed trial. A king should not only be the swiftest and wisest of his people, he says slowly, but there should be no doubt in his own mind of it. A king doesn't always tell what's in his mind, replied Bumper. No, but he should prove his skill and ability when challenged, was the quick retort. I didn't know that I was challenged, replied Bumper in a weak voice. Spotted Tail smiled wickedly. But you are Bumper. I, Spotted Tail, the swiftest and strongest rabbit in the woods, and the wisest challenge you to run a race with me. Are you afraid? Spotted Tail's friends immediately clapped their paws and nodded their heads. Fuzzy Wuzz and the other followers of Bumper looked a little worried, but their faith in their white leader came to their rescue. Yes, yes, they said in a breath. Bumper will race Spotted Tail and prove to him that he is no longer the swiftest and strongest rabbit of the woods. Of course, of course, echoed Spotted Tail's friends. There will be a race, a fair race, and a long race. We will all turn out to see it. Bumper's heart began to quake. Spotted Tail had long, powerful legs, and he could use them to good purpose. He was cut out for a fleet runner, and Bumper had no illusions on that point. His life in the city had never given him a chance to train for long running, and his muscles had never been fully developed. 
he had his misgivings about his speed when compared with that of this big powerful wild cousin of his yet as he recalled the wild flat he had made when pursued by the bats in the sewer and of his subsequent race with mr fox in the woods a smile crept into his face he had certainly run fast on those two occasions fear makes a rabbit run faster than anything else he remembered hearing the old blind rabbit remark one day i wish then bumper said to himself if i must race with spotted tail i'd get a good fright maybe i would beat him then there was no way out of the challenge spotted tail had made it and all the others including friends and foes had taken it up bumper could not withdraw without disgracing himself the test of speed was to be one of endurance as well as of fleetness of foot it was arranged to run a mile straight out to mr beaver's dam and back again a committee of four were to wait for them at the dam to see that each contestant rounded the point this would prevent any trick on the part of either one bumper realized right away that it was speed and endurance that would tell wit and wisdom would have nothing to do with the decision spotted tail really had the advantage for he was more familiar with the trails and by paths so that he could seek out the best in going and coming nevertheless bumper put up a brave front and entered the race with the determination to do his best they started from the burrow on even terms and shot through the bushes at a tremendous speed for a time they kept abreast within sight of each other then they became separated for spotted tail veered off to the right to follow an easier trail bumper had great difficulty in getting to the beaver's dam for twice he got lost in the bushes and had hard work finding the trail again he lost so much by this that when he reached the dam he was not surprised to hear his friend shout hurry hurry bumper spotted tails on his way back the first half of the race was lost to him but he could not refrain from calling back to his friends the race is never decided until it's finished fuzzy was and the others clapped their hands at this confident remark instead of losing faith in him they were more certain than ever that bumper would win well it didn't look so to bumper he felt that he could never overtake spotted tail and beat him to the finish he might be a quarter of a mile ahead of him and running like the wind the disheartening effect of being beaten to the first stake told on his speed and he ran only half-heartedly then suddenly out of the bushes on his right sprang something red and flashing bumper caught sight of it and his heart gave a great bound of fear it was mr fox bumper's fright was so great that he sprang over a clump of bushes that he never thought he could clear then with his heart in his mouth he ran for dear life the old blind rabbit's wise remark that fear makes a rabbit run faster than anything else never occurred to him he was too frightened to think of anything but oh how he ran his feet barely touched the ground he seemed to be flying rather than running never not even when the bats pursued him had he run so fast and the fox kept close behind him gaining a few steps now and then but losing whenever bumper took one of his wild leaps it was a terrible race in which death or life was the stake if he weakened or faltered an instant those red dripping jaws would have him when bumper came within sight of the burrow near the big rock he could see the rabbits waiting for the end of the race they were talking and chatting among themselves spotted tail was not in sight perhaps he had already finished scatter scatter for your life called bumper as he took a wild leap in the air it's bumper someone cried 
Then they caught sight of the red streak in pursuit. Mr. Fox is after him. Run for the burrow. They scampered for shelter, just as Bumper cleared the starting line and eluded the fox by a narrow margin. Once inside the burrow, he asked, Where's Spotty Tail? He hasn't come yet. You won the race, Bumper. And later, when Spotty Tail appeared, he was in a crestfallen mood, for when the race was apparently won by him, he had been frightened off the trail by the sudden appearance of Mr. Fox. Instead of running straight ahead, he had dodged into the bushes to hide. When you're racing, remarked Bumper, you don't want to turn aside for anything. Not even to save your hide. End of story five. Story 6 of Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Maria de Fatima da Silva. Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods by George Ethelbert Walsh. A Test of Courage. Spotted Tail was so chagrined by losing the race that he immediately began to scheme to humiliate Bumper in some other way. He was confident that the race hadn't gone to the swiftest and strongest, but he could not convince the others of this. The story of how the tortoise beat the hare in a race, because the latter had lain down to sleep on the way, was an old joke among the rabbits and Spotted Tail's excuses only aroused mirth and derision. No, clearly, Spotted Tail could not redeem his lost glory by challenging Bumper to another race, but there were other ways to discredit him in the eyes of his people. Oh, Bumper, king of the rabbits, he exclaimed one day in mock courtesy. The lion is called the king of the beasts and he won that title by his bravery and courage. Do you think that should make one king? Courage is a quality that every king and leader should have, replied Bumper cautiously. Greater than that of any of his subjects? Bumper hesitated, for he feared a trap, but when all the others looked at him, waiting upon his words, he felt that he had to assent. Yes, I suppose he should be the bravest of his people. Then, smiled Spotted Tail, you must be the bravest of all the rabbits in the woods, braver than old blind rabbit ever was, or any of the young ones here. I shouldn't like to claim that, faltered Bumper, modestly. Then you shouldn't be king, isn't that the law of the woods? A leader should be as brave as any of his people, Bumper answered, not braver. Perhaps that would be impossible. Well said, muttered the old blind rabbit. There are many of my people who are brave as any king, and more could not be asked of their leader. Spotted Tail licked his lips and smiled. We should make a test, he added, to see who are the brave ones among us. All who choose can enter it. Has anyone a test to suggest? There was absolute silence. Spotted Tail knew no one would think of a suitable test on the spur of the moment. So he proposed one himself, one that he had had in mind for some days. Suppose then, he added, still smiling, we cross one by one, swinging bridge, and those who get over safely will be entitled to be called brave. There was a gasp of surprise and consternation. Swinging Bridge was a small tree that had fallen across Rocky Ford, where the river cut deep through a narrow gorge. The tree seemed almost suspended in mid-air by the vines and bushes, and was very dangerous. Every wind swung it back and forth like a hammock strung between two trees. No rabbit had ever dared to cross it. It was supposed to be an impossible feat. The tree was so small and slippery that it afforded a small chance for an animal without claws to walk across it. It hung fifty feet from the river's bed, so that a fall from it meant almost sure death. 
It was foolhardy to try it. Bobby Gray Squirrel could run across it easily, but that was because he had claws with which to cling to it. Sleepy the Opossum and Washer the Raccoon could likewise walk across the bridge without fear of falling. But for a rabbit whose feet were not made to climb, it was a dangerous undertaking. Oh, no, not that, exclaimed Fuzzy Woods, shuddering. Why not, asked Spotted Tail. It will be a wonderful record for any rabbit who can do it. What do you say, Bumper? I'm willing if you are, Bumper replied, feeling that he could not withdraw from the challenge. Then we will draw lots to see who goes first, promptly added Spotted Tail, who had arranged the whole thing. That isn't fair, interrupted one of Bumper's followers. The challenger should go first. Since when was drawing lots unfair? Where is Spotted Tail? I appeal to your judgment, old blind rabbit. Isn't it fair? The old leader of the rabbit hesitated for a moment, but he had to admit that this form of selection had been common with his people as long as he could recollect. So when he decided in favor of Spotted Tail, the work of choosing their order of going across the bridge began. There were ten who stepped forward to accept the challenge. The old blind rabbit held the sticks as each one stepped up to choose. Bumper got the short one, either through chance or through some trick Spotted Tail had arranged. No one could say which it was, but a murmur of dissent went up at once. It wasn't a fair drawing, they cried. Try it over again. Spotted Tail played a trick on Bumper. No, interrupted Bumper. We'll not draw lots again. I'll cross Swinging Bridge first. This decision was accepted with applause and the rabbits trooped through the woods to Swinging Bridge. Bumper's first sight of it made him shiver. It was worse than he had imagined. The chasm was at least 30 feet across and the butt end of the tree was not more than 8 inches in diameter while the smaller end seemed to dwindle away into a mere whip. In fact, the tree could never have remained in its position if it hadn't been for the vines suspending it. I'll begin on this end, Bumper said, choosing the butt end of the tree. His quick eye had seen the only possible chance for crossing. Halfway across, where the tree grew smaller rapidly, there was a crotch which offered a firm footing. Bumper decided to walk out to this and then reach the other side in one tremendous hop. That would be crossing the bridge, for nothing in the terms had been said about the manner of going. While the others held their breath and Fuzzy Woods shook and trembled with fear, Bumper hopped on the tree and began making his way slowly along. He dared not look below where the river rolled and tossed over the rocks. He kept his eyes on the crotch ahead. He reached this without accident, then paused. The rest of the way was too perilous for any rabbit to proceed. Spotted Tail smiled to himself. He knew that it would be the last of the white rabbit if he attempted it. Bumper crouched low, fastened his hind feet firmly in the crotch, and then, to the surprise of all, leapt into the air in one tremendous spring that carried him clear across to the other side. His heart was beating at a lively rate, but when he realized that he had performed the difficult feat, a little glow of triumph spread over his face. Wonderful! Good for Bumper! were the cries from the other side that reached his ears. Now Spotted Tail, it's your turn, someone said. But Spotted Tail was white and trembling. He had never expected to be called upon to attempt it. With the death of Bumper in the river below, they would call the test off. It would be suicidal for another to try it. But now all was changed. Bumper was safe on the other side and they were calling on him to cross. He crouched in abject fear and seemed ready to ask for mercy when Bumper spoke. No, he said, it isn't safe. 
It's a foolhardy thing to do. I forbid anyone else trying it, you understand. Spotted Tail, I forbid it. Spotted Tail raised his head hopefully, and a cunning, cringing expression came into his eyes. The king must be obeyed, he said. Then, boastfully walking away, but I could have crossed without jumping half the way. That was not included in the terms of the test. End of story six. Story seven of Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods by George Ethelbert Walsh. The Test of Wits. Of course, Spotted Tail was glad that he had been relieved of making the terrible test of courage in crossing Swinging Bridge, but at the same time he was chagrined that bumper had come out of the contest with greater honors than ever it seemed as if in some way the white rabbit managed to make good by successfully crawling out of every corner in which spotted tail put him it's just luck blind luck growled spotted tail to himself and so it seemed to him for he was unwilling to face the truth and accept it it is always easier to blame luck for our failures and spotted rabbit was like a good many boys and girls in this respect instead of feeling any gratitude to bumper for saving him the humiliation of his life by forbidding any rabbit to undertake the crossing spotted tail allowed his rancor to increase day by day until he was in a fine frame of mind he wanted more than ever to get even with bumper as he expressed it then one day when the opportunity seemed to come to him he was prepared to take advantage of it it was to be a test of wits this time without his knowing it this was the one ground on which bumper was eager to be challenged it is to be feared that bumper had an inordinate conceit about his ability to get out of difficult places by using his wits so when spotted tail started in the usual way to work up to a challenge bumper readily encouraged him a good king is always a wise king isn't he bumper he asked he couldn't be a good king if he wasn't wise was the smiling retort just so i agree with you but what is wisdom can you describe it can you describe the sunlight spotted tail you see it every day and you know it when you see it but can you describe it i can describe it by saying that it is just the opposite of darkness spotted tail replied a little at a loss for a good answer to this unexpected question then i can describe wisdom in the same way it's the opposite of ignorance spotted tail frowned when the others laughed and clapped their paws at this retort but what i meant continued the discomfited rabbit recovering his composure is the application of wisdom how do we know a thing is wise until we've tried it how do we know a thing is hot or cold until we've burnt or frozen our paw by experience spotted tail we know it isn't necessary to run into a fire and scorch ourselves every time we see one to find out whether it is hot exactly bumper but some things we don't know by experience suppose you had never been in the water and didn't know how to swim but you'd seen other animals swim now if you fell in the water what would you do would the knowledge that you'd seen others swim save you perhaps replied bumper hesitatingly then smiling he added but the first thing i'd do would be to look around for a raft that would be safer than trying to learn to swim don't you think that would be the wise thing to do yes if there was a raft handy but suppose there was none in sight what would you do then bumper stretched himself and answered lazily i can't say spotted tail until i was put to the test but i think i'd use my wits or try to they had been sunning themselves on a board some hunter had stretched across a bend in the river spotted tail had lured bumper to the far end of the board for his wicked purpose the middle of the board rested on a stone 
and sometimes the young rabbits used it as a seesaw by running out to the ends two rabbits could make it jump up and down so that it splashed in the water and made a great commotion spotted tail was sitting next to bumper on the far end which stretched over very deep water he turned now to him and asked can you swim bumper were you ever in the water over your head no bumper answered truthfully but some day i must learn i think i'll begin to take lessons well to-day is a good day as any to begin replied spotted tail before bumper realized what he meant by this remark he leaped high in the air and landed on the other end of the springboard with a thud the result was that bumper was shot straight up into the air nearly two feet right over the deepest part of the river he turned a complete somersault in the air and made a frantic struggle to reach the end of the board as he came down but he missed it by a foot and fell plump in the river he went down 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 out of sight it seemed an age before he came up again wet bedraggled and puffing the fright caused by his sudden ducking threatened to make him panicky and his first thought was to squeal for help and splash around like a child in a bathtub but spotted tail's words aroused him now bumper he called you've got a chance to use your wits let me see what you can do to get ashore it was a cruel cold-blooded thing to do and the other rabbits who had seen the whole thing from the shore came scurrying to the rescue shouting shame shame on you spotted tail but of course this didn't help bumper any the water was very deep where he had fallen in and there wasn't the sign of anything that could be used as a raft could he swim not much by frantic efforts he could keep his head above water nearly every wild animal can do this even when a tiny baby but that wouldn't get him to the shore until he was exhausted but just when he was beginning to feel that he would drown his hind feet touched something it was a big rock in the middle of the stream which could not be seen from the springboard or the shore bumper found that by standing on his two hind feet on the rock he could just keep his head and neck above the surface this gave him sudden courage and a thought he stood stock still on the rock and turned to the one who had thrown him in it is much more dignified for a king to float upright spotted tail he said than to swim can you stand in the water like this spotted tail and the others were amazed by the sight of bumper standing perfectly still in the deep water with his head and neck just above the surface come now spotted tail you have challenged me to everything you could think of continued bumper now it is your turn to accept my challenge either show me that you can stand in the deep water or desist from further attempts to humiliate me you must do one or the other or i shall hold your challenges in contempt hereafter of course spotted tail knew he could never perform this miracle and he was at a loss to understand how bumper could do it then continued bumper when he showed no intention of coming in you are disgraced before all of your people all the while bumper had been watching for a way to get ashore he had been feeling with his hind legs for other rocks in the deep river to his joy he found one and quickly stepped to it there was a series of stepping stones which hunters used to cross the river when it was shallow they were hidden from view now by the flood bumper made his way cautiously from one to the other until he reached shallow water and then he hopped gracefully ashore much to spotted tail's chagrin End of story seven. story eight of bumper the white rabbit in the woods this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org bumper the white rabbit in the woods by george ethelbert walsh spotted tail stirs up revolt spotted tail was in disgrace not only had he wickedly thrown bumper into the deep water in full view of all the others but he had refused to accept the first challenge made to him he knew that he could never live down both one was enough to bring him into contempt but the two together had practically robbed him of all further influence among his people 
but instead of accepting his disgrace in a contrite spirit he became moody and sullen when the others including fuzzy was avoided him and passed him in silence he gnashed his teeth in a fine rage then he very naturally laid all the blame to bumper excusing himself from any guilt this did not improve his manners any and finally satisfied that he could get no sympathy in his home borough he decided to seek revenge outside he would spread the tale among all his people in the woods that the white rabbit was a fraud and that it was his intention to make them all submit to his rule this would naturally cause general anger and perhaps stir up a revolt the coming of bumper in the woods had not reached far rumors spread slowly unless taken up by the birds and bumper had made no attempt to interest them in his cause he was too busy learning the ways of the woods and the duties of a king and leader spotted tail decided to get ahead of him and spread the news first distorting it to suit his purpose he appealed to rusty the blackbird first rusty you've always been a friend of mine he said meeting him one day now will you do me a great favor tell me what it is first spotted tail was the reply it is this rusty bumper the white rabbit has come into the woods from somewhere and proclaimed himself king of all the rabbits he is a cruel king and intends to wage warfare upon all the burrows that do not submit to his rule i want you to spread the news all over the woods and warn all leaders of burrows to rise in revolt rusty looked at the speaker and flirted his wings no no spotted tail he replied i'm no carrier of evil messages besides i've met bumper the white rabbit and i liked him he didn't seem to me cruel or a bad sort of fellow spotted tail appealed next to mr woodpecker who listened to a story in silence and then tapped the trunk of a tree with his long hard bill no 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 he said keeping time with his taps i don't believe your story spotted tail bumper's not that kind good-bye spotted tail looked disappointed he was very sore and grouchy it seemed as if the birds as well as the rabbits were all against him why did they all like bumper the white rabbit so much he met toey the chewink next and approached her with a smile and friendly greeting but when he had stated his grievance and made his request modest little toey laughed in his face i've got better business than spreading such news she replied you'll have to find another messenger in turn spotted tail approached pincy the purple finch mrs phoebe bird and mr crested flycatcher and received from each one the same reply none of them would undertake the work of stirring up a revolt against bumper he was in despair and was bemoaning his luck when suddenly a voice startled him what's the matter spotted tail you look black enough to obscure the sun it was the shrike the butcher bird whose very name made him dreaded and hated shrike had the unpleasant habit of catching insects lizards frogs and sometimes small birds and sticking them on thorns until he or his mate was ready to eat them this disgusting and cruel habit made him an outcast among the birds and very few would have anything to do with him naturally it soured his disposition and made him irritable and unfriendly spotted tail looked up and a gleam of hope entered his eyes why not ask the shrike to spread the message that would stir up trouble by so doing he would accomplish two things he would get even with the birds who had refused to listen to his plea and accomplish the downfall of bumper i have enough trouble to make me look blue spotted tail replied even the brightness of the sun doesn't make me feel happy it must be trouble indeed then laughed the shrike for it's a beautiful day and everybody else feels happy what is it alack and alas sighed the rabbit i'm afraid you won't sympathize with me any more than mr woodpecker or rusty the blackbird or any of the others i have told my tale to them and they only laugh at me a wicked gleam flashed from the eyes of shrike the butcher bird rusty and mr woodpecker are self-conceited birds and what they think don't amount to much little i'd care what they said or did but they won't carry my message added spotted tail and if no one will do it how can i save the rabbits of the woods from the terrible thing that is coming to them what is the terrible thing queried the shrike growing interested it's about bumper the white rabbit continued the dejected rabbit sighing heavily 
he has come into the woods to rule over all my people and he is a cruel selfish king he intends to make all of us his slaves he won't listen to reason but says he is appointed to rule and any one who disputes his right he will drive from the woods the shrike smiled why don't you drive him from the woods he asked i never knew you to be afraid of anything i'd quickly put an end to his rule quite right mr shrike i would do it if it was only bumper i had to fight but he has come into our burrow and by tricks and strange ways won over old blind rabbit fuzzy was goggle eyes and all the others they're going to help him to rule in the woods ah hum mused the shrike so that's the trouble you're the only good rabbit in the burrow oh no i didn't mean that protested spotted tail i'm no better than the others but he couldn't deceive me i saw it through his tricks and because i opposed him i'm in disfavor and what is this message you want me to carry to the rest of the rabbits in the woods i wish to put them on their guard so bumper cannot deceive them if they would rise in their might they could overwhelm him even if all my family backed him up if a revolt isn't begun right away he will win them by degrees and then it will be too late and rusty and mr woodpecker refused to carry the message queried the shrike yes sighed spotted tail i don't believe they like me i've never been very friendly with the birds shrike the butcher bird hesitated for a moment to impale a worm on a thorn for future use and then said all right spotted tail i'll carry the message to every rabbit burrow in the woods oh shrike you're so kind exclaimed spotted tail but the bird interrupted him with a harsh laugh it isn't because i like you spotted tail he said that i'm doing this but just to spite the other birds i'll punish them for scorning and disliking me that's why i do it good-bye i'll begin spreading the news right away end of story eight story nine of bumper the white rabbit in the woods this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org bumper the white rabbit in the woods by george ethelbert walsh the work of shrike the butcher bird shrike the butcher bird was as good as his word he was a vindictive bird and it actually gave him pleasure in spreading spotted tail's message because all the other birds had refused first he went to white tail at the far end of the woods for he knew that white tail was a big rabbit who at one time had had trouble with the old blind rabbit oh white tail called the shrike here is news for you bumper the white rabbit has been proclaimed king of the woods by old blind rabbit and he intends to make all of you his slaves white tail reared himself on his hind legs and clicked his teeth if you'd come with good news shrike i wouldn't have believed you but as the carrier of bad news i think there must be something in it who sent you spotted tail ah spotted tail i never did like him but i never knew him to spread false news if bumper comes to interfere with my family he will well leering i will tell him what i think of him good day shrike and much obliged for your trouble next shrike the butcher bird interviewed brindley the lame so named because of a limp he had from infancy brindley was a good-natured rabbit and ruled over his burrow with kindness and was loved wherever he went ah brindley cried shrike when he met him in front of his burrow sunning himself you look well to-day and as fat as butter too bad to spoil your rest with bad news bad news never spoil my rest was the grinning reply i always sleep over it and then when i wake up i find it isn't so bad as it seemed well you'll think differently when i tell you this all the rabbits in the woods are rising in revolt against bumper the white rabbit that has come here to rule over them as king indeed who are all the rabbits you speak of spotted tail white tail and many others ah mm, sighed brindley then bumper'd better look out i wouldn't want to be wearing his crown but aren't you going to join the revolt 
asked the shrike or are you so good-natured you'd submit to any tyrant who came along i'm never so good-natured as when i'm thinking seriously shrike was the retort now i'll tell you what i'll do i'll sleep over it and then i won't do anything hasty there was crooked ears a big rabbit who ruled over a family of twenty in a burrow buried deep under the cliff pink nose whose family was noted for the remarkable pinkish tinge that decorated the tips of their noses and roly-poly who was so round and fat that he could roll down a hill faster than he could run they lived in different parts of the woods and it took all the morning for the shrike to find them and spread the news they accepted the tale with different degrees of surprise and distrust roly-poly was too fat and pleasant to let it worry him much and pink nose was more interested in what bumper looked like than his mission in the woods when the shrike explained that he was a pure white rabbit with pink eyes pink nose eagerly asked what's the color of his nose knowing his fondness for pink-nosed rabbits and fearing that he might claim kinship with bumper if he had said he had a pink nose shrike purposely stretched the truth it is all white the same as his fur everything white except his pink eyes pink nose looked disappointed i wish he had a pink nose he said sadly then i'd know he was related to me pink oh ho laughed the shrike he hates pink-nosed rabbits who told you that snapped pink nose spotted tail he lied without blinking pink nose's eyes turned a dark green and the shrike flew away knowing that he had planted the seeds of discord in the mind of a perfectly good-natured rabbit crooked ears was a big surly rabbit whose disposition had been spoilt when very young by an accident which had twisted his ears so they looked more like pretzels than anything else the shrike was quick to detect crooked ears weak point he was forever trying to hide his crooked ears and he lay stretched out in the sun with his paws drawn up over them as if ashamed to have any one see them the shrike told him the news but crooked ears said peevishly oh go away don't disturb me now i'm very sleepy the shrike whistled and fluttered his tail feathers in disdain all right crooked ears he added i thought you'd like to know of the revolt and of bumper's threat what was the threat asked crooked ears sleepily that he'd bite and twist the ears of every rabbit that opposed him until they all looked like yours he said that growled crooked ears rising he made fun of my ears made fun of them oh ho what a joke listen crooked ears and i'll tell you what he said about them crooked ears seemed to be all ears now for his anger was aroused he said continued the shrike that all rabbits with crooked ears should be run from the woods they were not fit to live with rabbits that had good straight ears does that interest you i don't believe you snapped crooked ears but the shrike only laughed shrilly and flew away to find another burrow he knew that he had angered crooked ears and poisoned his mind against bumper all the day he flew from burrow to burrow spreading the evil news until by night every rabbit in the woods knew of bumper's coming and believed that he was going to declare himself king and make every one of his people a slave there was a powwow that night in every burrow and the talk of what to do ran high some were angry and indignant others more amused than angry and a few so belligerent that they wanted to set out on the warpath at once when the shrike returned to spotted tail he gleefully told all that he had done and seemed greatly amused by the latter's joy spotted tail thanked him over and over again until the shrike's amusement was uncontrollable he laughed and whistled as if it were a very great joke then cocking his head sideways he added you didn't thank me spotted tail for i didn't do it to please you it was just to spite the other birds just the same you have done me a great favor and i'm grateful for it was the answer favor favor you call it ha 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 wait and see spotted tail my mission isn't done yet you haven't told all the rabbits yes and now i'm going to tell all the animals buster the bear mr fox billy the mink washer the raccoon and all the others 
there'll be a right merry time when they see you fighting among yourselves i think mr fox and buster may take a hand in it what a chance they'll have for a good meal and still laughing shrilly he flew away leaving spotted tail in a very unpleasant frame of mind suppose the other animals should take advantage of the revolt to pounce upon the rabbits how much innocent blood would be spilled because of his trickery end of story nine Story 10 of Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Maria de Fatma da Silva. Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods by George Ethelbert Walsh. Rusty Warns Bumper of course bumper knew nothing about the revolt the spotted tail had stirred up in the woods against him after all he felt a little sympathy for spotted tail when all the others began to ignore him and give him the cold shoulder but really there was nothing he could do for spotted tail had brought the trouble all on himself because of his envy and spite being a king isn't all lettuce and carrots sighed bumper i'm not sure but i'd rather be just fuzzy wuzz who smiles and laughs all day or even goggle eyes who eats altogether too much for himself but seems to enjoy it then there's so much a king has to know he added a moment later i'm learning all the time new things but what i don't know yet frightens me i wish sometimes i could take a vacation and just go off and forget everything i wonder why kings don't have vacations such a thing as a vacation for a king was unheard of although all of the rest could take any day they chose bumper couldn't even steal out of the burrow alone for a little run without somebody going with him the king had to be watched and accompanied all the time now old blind rabbit in proclaiming bumper the white rabbit king had thought first of only his own family for he had no control over the other burrows but he was so well known for his wisdom and age that the leaders of other burrows would listen to his words he had wanted to keep bumper's coming a secret until he was sure that he had made no mistake in choosing him but now he thought was a good time to take him around to his friends brindley the lame pink nose roly-poly and crooked ears he wanted them to meet bump and judge for themselves as leaders of their families they knew the prophecy of the coming of a white rabbit who some day would rule over all their people and redeem them from their weak ways bumper my days are numbered but yours are as many as the trees in the woods he said to the white rabbit before i go i want to see you accepted as king by pink nose roly-poly crooked ears brindley the lame and white tail then i can die in peace bumper nodded his head and asked who all these important people were they are leaders of big families here in the woods and very influential if they accept you all the other rabbits will follow and if they don't then i fear there will be trouble you cannot rule over divided people and make them happy this bit of wisdom could not be disputed and bumper added sadly neither can the ruler be happy well said bumper but the time has come now when we must call on them i shall take you in person and explain to white tail and the others the meaning of our call this idea rather frightened bumper to meet so many important leaders and carry himself as a king should made him feel like quitting just for an instant he thought of the red-headed girl and her wonderful garden and wished he was back with her how delightful it would be to do nothing all day long but eat and receive 
her petting. He even thought he might be happier with the old woman back in the city. But only for an instant did his thoughts thus play truant. He was a king now, with duties to perform, and he wasn't going to prove unequal to them. Bumper had very fine qualities, which, after all, fitted him for a ruler more than his pink eyes and white fur. Goodness and wisdom were better than fine clothes. Bumper had been learning rapidly the ways of his people in the woods, and he was quite familiar with many things that had before startled him. He had learned to know the difference between the good and bad plants, so there was no longer any danger of his poisoning himself. He had met Washer the raccoon and had made the acquaintance of Sleepy the opossum. He was on good speaking terms with Mr. Beaver, and Billy the mink had put himself out to compare his fur with his own beautiful coat. He knew every trail in the woods and could scent Mr. Fox from afar. He had even learned to swim, which he considered necessary for his health. The birds were his friends, and he had learned much from them. Frequently they brought him news which guided him in his work. A few days after the old blind rabbit had announced his intention of introducing Bumper to White Tail and the others, Rusty the Blackbird appeared near the burrow and perched himself on the top of the rock until the White Rabbit appeared. Hello, Bumper, he called. Good morning, Rusty, replied Bumper. It's a long time since I've seen you. If you'd arranged to see me oftener, was the retort, you wouldn't get in so much trouble. Thank you, Rusty, but I didn't know I was in trouble. Huh? whistled Rusty. Some people don't know when they are in trouble. Then it shouldn't bother them, laughed Bumper. If you don't know you have any trouble, why worry? That may be good enough for the king, but it would never do for common people. We must be hunting for trouble all the time to avoid it. If you hunt for it, you'll generally find it. No, I don't believe in looking for what you don't want. Rusty was a little provoked at what he took as a personal rebuke and was half inclined to fly away, but Bumper's smile changed his mind. Just to show you the trouble comes whether you hunt for it or not, I'm going to tell you something, he added. You're going to be in a peck of trouble soon, Bumper. That's much better than being in a bushel, isn't it? He laughed. Oh, stop your joking and be serious. This is a serious matter for you. All right, I'm listening. Well then, Spotted Tail has been spreading false rumors about you. He asked me to carry the message, but I refused. And he asked Mr. Woodpecker and Tohi, the chairwink. They told me so. But they wouldn't listen to him. I'm very grateful for that, and you can tell Tohi and Mr. Woodpecker so. But if nobody carried the news, how did it get abroad? Mr. Shrike, the butcher bird, carried it just because we wouldn't. And after telling all the rabbits, he told the news to Mr. Fox and Buster the Bear. What is the news he told? asked Bumper gravely. In a few words, Rusty told him. And when he was through, Bumper was graver than before. It pained him to think that Spotted Tail would betray him and it made him sad to believe that his words could stir up discord among the rabbits. Thank you, Rusty, he said in conclusion. I'm glad to know it. Forewarned is forearmed. Ho, ho, laughed Rusty. Now you begin to change your mind about trouble. But you don't have to hunt for it. It's coming soon. It's here now. End of story 10「Story 11 of Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Maria de Fatima da Silva. Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods by George Ethelbert Walsh. 
The Rabbits Rise Against Bumper Forewarned by Rusty, Bumper was partly prepared for the trouble that was brewing, but not so old blind rabbit. Bumper had intended to tell him the truth, but he didn't want to raise unnecessary alarm. Perhaps, after all, Rusty had exaggerated the danger, and nothing would come of Spotted Tail's work. So one morning he was greatly disturbed when there was a noise outside the burrow made by the pattering of many little feet. It was Goggle Eyes who brought the information in to Old Blind Rabbit. There is something in the wind, Old Blind Rabbit, he exclaimed in excitement. All the rabbits of the woods have come to visit us. There's White Tail with his huge family, Pink Nose and all his big sons, Crooked Ears, looking surly and angry, Brindley the Lame, Roly Poly, and oh, many, many more. Old Blind Rabbit did not get excited. It was the way with him. Instead of always looking for trouble, he expected the best of everything. Perhaps it means, he replied after a moment's thought, that they have heard of Bumper's coming and they have come to meet him. I shall go out and see them. They're all welcome. They don't look very friendly, stammered Goggle Eyes. They look and act positively rude. I don't believe their coming is for any good. Toot toot, you're always looking for the worst, Goggle Eyes. Now I'll go out and greet my brother leaders. Lend me a paw, Goggle Eyes. No, interrupted Bumper, who had heard the conversation. You must let me go out first. I'll speak to them. And if there's trouble... Spoken like a king, Bumper, interrupted Old Blind Rabbit. But I should meet White Tail and his friends first. They know me. Listen, added Bumper. I have not told you before because I didn't believe anything would come of it. But there may be trouble outside. What trouble, Bumper? You mustn't follow the ways of Goggle Eyes and look for evil in everything. Bumper knew that he ought to tell, and straight away, without hesitation, he related all that Rusty had told him. Old Blind Rabbit listened in silence, but not without surprise and trembling. Where is Spotted Tail? he asked in a voice of thunder when Bumper had finished. Spotted Tail was nowhere around. Nobody knew where he was. He has betrayed us, added Old Blind Rabbit solemnly. He has spread false news to our friends and used Shrike the Butcher Bird as his messenger. Alack and alas, that I shall live to see this day. For a moment, Old Blind Rabbit dropped back on his haunches and looked very sad and depressed. His age told on him, and his breath came slow and hard. Finally, arousing himself, he continued, If Spotted Tail has stirred up a revolt, the truth must be told. I will see the leaders. They will listen to me. No, let me go, interrupted Bumper again. If there's any danger on my account, I must face it, and not you, old blind rabbit. They will not harm me. But in their passion, they might do something to you, Bumper. It is a part of wisdom that I should see them first, isn't it so? All the others agreed to this, and much against his will, Bumper stayed in the burrow, while old blind rabbit was led outside by goggle eyes. And what a sight it was outside the burrow. All the wild rabbits of the woods were assembled there, White tail, pink nose, crooked ears, Brindley the lame, Roly Poly, and a lot of other leaders were there with all their followers. The woods around the rock were literally alive with rabbits. They were packed ten deep around the big rock and scattered in groups all through the surrounding bushes. And on every face there was an angry, defiant look, and in every eye sullen discontent. Old blind rabbit could not see all these sights but he sensed them before anyone spoke. Then a babel of sounds greeted his ears. There were so many and so confusing that nobody could understand anybody else. Finally, Old Blind Rabbit reared himself on his haunches and raised a paw for silence. Listen, he called. 
There's no sense in jabbering like silly babies. What is the trouble? Don't all speak at once. But where's Bumper the White Rabbit? They shouted back in unison. Once more, the senseless chatter made the air ring until Brindley the Lame took a tree stump and signaled for silence. This isn't a tea party, he said, smiling. And we shouldn't waste time talking like a lot of magpies. Let some of the leaders speak for all. There was instant silence, and hundreds of heads were nodded. Brindley then continued, As for my part, I'm not sure, but we're all here on a fool's errand. I never knew the Shrike to carry news that did anyone good. However, we're here, and a big crowd we are. We've brought all of our families with us, big and little, and I'm glad to see them. Mrs. White Tail, with her children, and Mrs. Pink Nose, Brindley's jollying pleased the younger rabbits, and they began to laugh and applaud, but not so the leaders. Crooked ears rose up and interrupted. Come to the point, Brindley. We're here to drive Bumper the White Rabbit from the woods. That's the long and short of it. Am I not right? A terrifying shout greeted these words, and for a moment it seemed as if Bedlam had broken loose. Even Old Blind Rabbit was frightened, and he trembled so that Goggle Eyes was afraid he would fall down. What has Bumper done that you should want to drive him from the woods, was all that Old Blind Rabbit could say. It's not what he's done, roared White Tail, leaping to the top of a fallen tree. It's what he's going to do. He'll not be king of the woods. No, no, shouted a hundred voices. We'll not be his slaves. We'll not follow him. Listen, friends, old blind rabbit called back. You have been deceived. Spotted Tail has spread false rumors. He knew they were false, and he couldn't get Rusty or Mr. Woodpecker or Towhee or any of the birds who were his friends to carry the message to you. Then when they all failed him, he appealed to Shrike the Butcher Bird. He paused and looked with his sightless eyes over the big assemble. Then, raising his voice, he continued, Since when have you come to believe what Shrike tells? When has he ever spread anything but lies in the woods? He has no friends among the birds. Suddenly, there was a commotion on the outskirts of the crowd. Shrike flew in their midst and whistled sharply. Then out of the bushes crashed Buster the Bear, followed by Mr. Fox. Screams and shouts went up from all sides as every rabbit scurried for cover. They ran pell-mell hither and thither with Mr. Fox and Buster after them, laughing in their glee at the fright they had caused. It was a miracle that some were not killed, for it hardly seemed there were enough hiding places in the woods to conceal them. Old Blind Rabbit stumbled back in his burrow and invited as many to follow him as the place would hold. End of Story 11Story number 12 of Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Patty T. Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods by George Ethelbert Walsh. Story 12. Spotted Tail Receives His Punishment. Yes, it was certainly a miracle that there wasn't a great slaughter of rabbits in the woods when Buster and Mr. Fox broke up the huge assemble. To this day they marvel at it. The only explanation the leaders could give was that Mr. Fox and Buster the Bear were more interested in frightening them than in killing. So they howled over as many as they could and didn't stop to bite any of them. What a crowded house old blind rabbit had, though! Every rabbit who could squeeze through the doorway had followed him in the burrow. It was the most mixed audience ever gathered in one burrow. There were followers of Pink Nose huddling alongside of Roly Poly's family, and Brindley the Lame was crowded next to White Tail. They were packed in so tight that it was difficult for anyone to move. Bumper was crowded way in the back alongside Fuzzy Wuzz. Not understanding the great noise, Bumper had at first stood by the entrance to fight back any intruders that followed Old Blind Rabbit. He thought they were crowding in the burrow to get him. 
but goggle eyes and fuzzy was understood his mistake and they took him by the paws and forced him to the back part of the burrow it's mr fox and buster the bear cried fuzzy was in his ears bumper understood immediately and his wrath turned to kindness he helped to make room for all the strangers that came pell-mell in the burrow the excitement didn't quiet down at once shivering with terror at their narrow escape everyone squealed and tried to talk at once there was danger of the little ones being trampled upon and hurt until the leaders began to get their senses back stop crowding shouted white tail we're safe in here now everyone keep quiet while we think it was so quiet that one could almost hear their thoughts but they were so confused that it wouldn't have done much good no one could have made head or tail out of them it was old blind rabbit who first got over his scare and came to his senses how many are here he asked turning to the others for an answer to his question so many we can't count them replied goggle eyes my i was never in such a crowd before in all my life is white tail here continued old blind rabbit yes i squeezed in at the last minute and lost a handful of fur in doing it and pink nose here came the answer from a corner and brindley the lame continued old blind rabbit as if calling the roll of all his friends here roly-poly here crooked ears here old blind rabbit stopped for a moment now as there is no danger of further interruption by mr fox or buster he added finally we might proceed with our business we were talking about shrike the butcher bird when we were interrupted i ask you then when had shrike carried other than lies and evil news never shouted someone and others started up with various cries he deceived us he summoned mr fox and buster the bear to kill us i shall never believe him again a faint smile spread over old blind rabbit's face then if that's true he continued how can you believe the rumors he spread in the woods about bumper the white rabbit were they not lies too this question caused a sudden sensation no one had quite thought of this if shrike had betrayed them to mr fox and buster why could it not be true that the whole story was part of a trick made up by him but spotted tail sent the news by him said white tail suddenly shrike said so but did you see spotted tail himself asked old blind rabbit why no i didn't see him replied white tail nor i nor i spoke up pink nose roly-poly and all the others in turn then resumed old blind rabbit how do we know that the whole story wasn't invented by shrike to stir up trouble that's so laughed brindley i never thought of that but where's spotted tail let him speak for himself this was just the thing that spotted tail crouching and trembling in a corner dreaded the most he was so shaken and horrified by the result of his treachery that he had to be pushed forward when they called him tell us the truth spotted tail said old blind rabbit severely you're on trial now there is some good even in the worst of us and although spotted tail had done many wicked things he still possessed a sense of honor he could have lied out of it and declared his innocence for no one had direct evidence that he had started the wicked stories except the birds yes he could easily have cleared his skirts by declaring that shrike had made up the whole story and that he knew nothing of it but he was frightened and repentant he was no longer defiant he looked so humiliated that some of the gentler rabbits pitied him i'll tell the truth he stammered finally i did start the story and ask shrike to spread it i was jealous of bumper and wanted to have him driven from the woods i am sorry now but that won't help what's happened no replied old blind rabbit severely after the milk is spilt it does no good to cry over it you betrayed your own people and nearly caused the death of many of them now what punishment do you think you deserve spotted tail hung his head in fear and humiliation there is only one punishment to suit the case old blind rabbit said after a pause and that is to be banished from the woods never again can you speak to any of your people nor shall they speak to you go spotted tail go and never return is that not a just punishment yes yes cried many and the leaders of the burrow shook their heads in assent but before he could retire from the burrow in shame and disgrace bumper hopped from his corner and faced the assembly one minute old blind rabbit he said let me speak a word for spotted tail 
His sinning was against me most, and I should be heard. He is repentant now, and we should give him another chance. I ask you to take back that sentence. Old Blind Rabbit looked hard and severe as he shook his head. Sentence has been passed, he said sternly, and justice demands that Spotted Tail be banished from the woods. But justice tempered with mercy is what I'm asking for, replied Bumper. Again, Old Blind Rabbit shook his head, and White Tail, Crooked Ears, and the others agreed with him. Then, resumed Bumper sadly, I shall go with him. If you banish Spotted Tail from the woods, you banish me too. The consternation that followed this remark was so great you could have heard a pin drop. Everyone was looking at the white rabbit, and as if fascinated by his pink eyes and white fur, they remained mute and awed. Finally, Old Blind Rabbit, seeing his opportunity, said, What the king says must be obeyed. Yes, what the king says must be obeyed, cried many as if they were hypnotized, and even White Tail and the other leaders offered no opposition. Long live Bumper the White Rabbit as our king, quavered Old Blind Rabbit, his voice cracking. And everyone took up the cry, Long live Bumper the White Rabbit as our king. End of Story 12「Story thirteen of Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Patty T. Bumper the White Rabbit in the Woods by George Ethelbert Walsh. Story thirteen. Bumper wins Spotted Tail's friendship. So Bumper became king of all the rabbits in the woods, and all his people vowed they would stand loyally by him, and the big leaders, White Tail, Pink Nose, Crooked Ears, Brindley the Lame, and Roly Poly, promised to obey him and teach their children and their children's children to love and follow him. A king who is merciful to those who hurt him is a good and wise king, said White Tail as he came forward to pay homage. Wisdom is greater than courage, said Brindley, but greater than either is mercy. I believed pink noses were the signs of royalty in rabbits, remarked Pink Nose, when his turn came next. But pink eyes are more to be desired, and I shall teach my children the truth of this. Surely, said Roly Poly, his eyes twinkling, this is a great day for the rabbits of the North Woods, and anything I can say will never be remembered. But I hope my next dinner will disagree with me if I ever speak an ill word of our king. Brindley was smiling and chuckling, too, when he walked up. The sudden happy turn of affairs was much to his liking. Oh, Bumper, our white king, he exclaimed. The winter's snow is not whiter than your coat, and your soul is whiter than either. May neither ever fade or grow tarnished in the use. Crooked Ears, who had come to the assembly with a grouch, which he intended to vent upon Bumper, stood hesitating a moment before he bowed and took the king's paw. Then he looked up and smiled. Ears, O oh Bumper, are given to hear and whether they are crooked or straight, they should gather in the truth and not the lies. Mine have heard the truth today, and may they grow more crooked if they ever listen to the untruth again. Now when the leaders had finished swearing their allegiance to Bumper, the others crowded forward, and for half an hour poor Bumper had a hard time of it. They wanted to shake his paw and feel of his soft fur and gaze into his pink eyes until it seemed as if their curiosity would never be satisfied and Bumper was in more danger of being spoilt by flattery than ever before in his life. From a secret corner, Fuzzy Wuzz watched him through her mild brown eyes, and at times she frowned. If her eyes could have spoken, they would have said something like this. Can he stand all that flattery and admiration? I'm afraid for him. But Bumper did stand it, for when the visitors began to leave, one by one, and the burrow became emptied once more, he drew a heavy sigh of relief. He turned to Fuzzy Wuzz, who was still watching him, and said, It's been an exciting day, Fuzzy Wuzz, hasn't it? And I, for one, am glad it's over, but gladder because all's ended well. There'll be no more trouble in the woods among our own people. Not a word about the remarkable tribute to his looks and wisdom, or anything about the high position they had placed him in. He was still plain Bumper when with his own family. Oh, Bumper, exclaimed Fuzzy Wuzz, I was so afraid, afraid. Afraid? Afraid of what, Fuzzy was? he asked in surprise when she stopped. 
instead of answering directly she laughed and said oh nothing i meant i'm so happy then i am too whatever makes you happy i like but when he smiled into her meek brown eyes he happened to catch a glimpse of spotted tail crouching in a corner looking so miserable and forlorn that his heart smote him he left fuzzy was and hopped directly over to him spotted tail he said will you be my friend a look of surprise and wonder came into the sad eyes of the other and for a moment he could not understand just what bumper was asking i don't understand he stammered in confusion oh you mean will i promise never to betray you again yes yes i promise that bumper promise never to speak ill of you again i didn't mean that replied bumper i ask if you would be my friend you know what friendship means trust faith loyalty and all that yes i trust you stammered spotted tail how could it be otherwise after what you've done for me and faith yes i have faith in you i believe you're a just and upright leader as for loyalty bumper you can ask for my life and i'll give it to you bumper smiled happily at these declarations of friendship but still spotted tail hadn't quite understood his meaning how to make him believe that he forgave everything and wanted to be his friend troubled him come with me spotted tail he said finally extending a paw i want everyone to see that we have forgiven and forgotten and that we're friends now then to spotted tail's surprise bumper led him up to fuzzy was and said spotted tail and i have made up all of our differences and are going to be fast friends hereafter congratulate both of us fuzzy was fuzzy was was as wise and quick as she was good she understood immediately and extending a paw grasped one of spotted tails let the past be as if it never were spotted tail she said sweetly bumper's friends are my friends and that makes us friends doesn't it spotted tail nodded in embarrassment he was so stupefied with surprise that he hardly knew what to say then to goggle eyes and the others bumper took him in turn and gave them to understand that anything they said against spotted tail they would be saying against him the old blind rabbit was the last one they came to bumper repeated his words but remained a little uncertain just how the stern old leader would accept the change old blind rabbit had a stern sense of justice and this sudden forgiveness of spotted tail might not suit him but finally a kindly smile spread over his face and he laid a paw on the breast of each i have lived to see justice interpreted o bumper he said there will be joy in all the north woods now that we have a king who is as merciful as he is wise and just may spotted tail learn wisdom from you the past is forgotten we live now only for the future and when they had retired to a corner from the rest spotted tail found his voice it was low and husky oh bumper you have heaped coals of fire on my head he exclaimed you have made me ashamed of myself i wronged you because i was envious and jealous of your power i told shrike to spread the news that you were a king come to make all the rabbits in the north woods your slaves now they're all your friends but you have one slave i bumper am your slave ask anything of me and i will do it then i ask one thing spotted tail was the reply and you've promised to grant it yes i have promised not knowing what it is it is very simple spotted tail never let me hear you call yourself my slave again instead speak of me as your friend and if you wish to gain my favors call yourself my friend is that too much to promise it's not enough o oh bumper but as you say i'm your friend now and forevermore you believe me yes i know you speak the truth end of story thirteen